Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator, and with me today is my co-host, Bill Gehring, County Board Chairman, and our guest, Sheriff Michael Helmke, who was elected in November and took uh, his new responsibilities over in January. And why don't we get started, Mike, by uh, you telling us a little bit about yourself and your background in law enforcement. I am, as uh, Mr. Payne said, uh, Michael Helmke. I am a lifelong resident of Sheboygan County. Um, uh, I'm married and have two adult children. I currently live in the city of Sheboygan. I have been a life, uh, well, a 25 year member of the Sheriff's Department. In fact, today is my 25th anniversary I'll with Sheboygan there. County. Um, I have uh, made law enforcement uh, my career and Sheboygan County is the place that I chose to uh, explore my career. Well, happy anniversary, 25 years right. on the law enforcement with, with the Sheriff's Department. Correct. And you've also done some other work, have you not? With Yes. Uh, actually, I started my law enforcement career six months prior to starting with the county with the uh, Village of Cascade Police Department, where I was hired um, okay. as their police chief. Um, over, I, I uh, retired from that position um, the end of last year after serving 25 and a half years with them. Um, uh, as part of those responsibilities, we also provided law enforcement services to um, the town of Linden and the village of Waldo. All right. So, a long campaign, a, a well fought uh, race. What initiated the thoughts of one day becoming sheriff? Why'd you want to be sheriff? Well, um, I think that. Uh, just based on what I had said that, uh, you know, I chose to make law enforcement my career and Sheboygan County the place in which I wanted to um, participate in law enforcement. I've been, I've had a history of being um, actively involved in, in the Sheriff's Department with different programs and uh, different uh, special assignments and, and so on and for, so forth. So I figured that um, this was kind of a natural progression in my professional career. So why don't you give our viewers a little bit of a flavor for your roles and responsibilities. What's it like to be sheriff? What are you responsible for? Well, um, the sheriff as the department head is uh, responsible for the uh, overall leadership of the uh, sheriff's department. Um, obviously, I'm uh, directly involved in setting goals and objectives, managing, supervising, and organizing the work within the sheriff's department. And. Can you expand on that a little bit in regards to some of your daily activities? I know you meet with your top managers and uh, talk about you know where you're headed and what some of the, the objectives are for the day, but what else could you share with yes, us? Yes, um, I guess uh, if, if anything has surprised me in, in the eight weeks or two months that I've held this office is um, the number of meetings um, that, that are involved. Um, I, uh, my time is, uh, is incredibly valuable now, and uh, meeting with people, which, which I had expected uh, was going to be a large part of the job, um, has, is, is probably occupying a lot of my, my time and attention right now. But um, in addition to that, um, you know, the sheriff has got to um, work with, uh, within, with, with other county department heads. Um, with other law enforcement officials and uh, city and county officials to to um, provide the service that law enforcement provides. So yeah. we kind of all work together and uh, it's, it's, it's a large part of my job meeting and, and, and coordinating those efforts. Communication is key. It is. Now you mentioned working with other law enforcement jurisdictions. How is the Sheriff's Department different than other municipal police departments? Well by statute uh, the Sheriff's department or, or the sheriff um, has statutory responsibilities which include uh, being the custodian of the county jail, um, providing courtroom security, um, for an example bailiffs in each of the five circuit courts. Um, the sheriff is also responsible by statute to execute all process and civil process, writs and warrants and things like that. Um, they are also um, in charge of enforcing um, rescue and water recovery for lakes within their jurisdiction. And then typically, um, what most people 
see law enforcement do is to provide law enforcement services to the um, areas of the county that don't have their own municipal police departments. In addition to that, um, the sheriff is uh, to enforce all orders of the Department of Commerce as it relates to the sale, transportation, and storage of explosives. Um, so if you have any ideas of who might want to help us in, <laughs> in those details, let me know. Sure. Um, I think most of our viewers who have um, watched the program from time to time every month or just about every month, we focus on a different department and just try to bring to our viewers a better understanding of the roles and responsibility of their county government. We've got over a $130 million budget. We have 23 departments. Law enforcement, the Sheriff's Department, is one of our largest, without question. How many employees do you have and approximately what's your annual budget? Um, we have 178 employees at the Sheriff's Department and um, our 2003 budget is $13.3 million. And with a budget of that size and that number of employees, and, and you just gave a nice snapshot of some of the roles and responsibilities, how many divisions does the Sheriff's Department have? Or if you were explaining it to a lay person, you know, how would you break it out by divisions and their respective roles and responsibilities? Sure. The, sh the Sheriff's Department has three divisions, but within those three divisions there are actually four work units um, that are more easily identifiable. Um, the patrol division, like I had just uh, mentioned, is probably the one that um, people equate more commonly to to the Sheriff's Department, and that is providing law enforcement services to uh, those parts of the counties that don't have their own municipal police department. Although we do aid other municipal police departments in certain specialized functions, our primary responsibility in the patrol division is to provide those law enforcement services to um, the other citizens of Sheboygan County. Uh, we have a criminal investigations division that um, is comprised of detectives that are in charge of investigating criminal offenses and uh, doing criminal investigations. Um, they'll do um, background investigations, uh, employment background investigations, and things of those nature. Uh, we have a, a civil process division. I had mentioned before that that was one of the statutory responsibilities of the sheriff. We have a work unit there of um, four full-time deputies who um, all they do is serve civil process papers, evictions, writs, um, foreclosures, and uh, things of those nature. And we have a, uh, oh, also in the Civil Process Division, following under kind of their same venue, uh, our court services. I had mentioned the bailiffs provide security to the court, to the courts. We have um, five bailiffs that serve one in each one of the five uh, circuit courts. Um, and then we have a, a corrections division, which has uh, probably become one of our largest divisions as far as employees and uh, where a lot of our our, our money is uh, dedicated to. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, um, basically three freestanding jail facilities. We have our detention center on the south side in the industrial park that um, houses our, our secure mail and Huber Law mails. And downtown, above the sheriff's department, we have uh, what, what was the old jail, um, that, that has been bas basically sectioned off into two sections. Uh, one section is for um, females, and um, in, in part of that same section is um, uh, the males that are brought over to the detention center that are being held for a court appearance that they have temporary holding area for them. And then the other um, segregated section of the downtown jail is our juvenile detention facility, which houses uh, obviously juvenile offenders and just a, a quick distinction, you mentioned Huber Law inmates. What is a Huber Law inmate? Huber Law inmates or work release inmates are sometimes called are, are those um, people that have been sentenced to do a jail term but have Huber Law privileges or work release privileges that so they're, they're allowed to leave jail to work and then they, they're required to come back. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Mike, the Sheriff's Department has a number of special teams or units. Could you talk about those teams or units? Certainly. Um, we have a, um, a highly trained accident reconstruction unit. Um, what they do is uh, they investigate our more serious injury accident or in our fatal accidents. Um, uh, they are extensively trained and highly trained in, in accident investigations and all of the dynamics that are involved in an accident. Um, they are also 
um, equipped with uh, specialized equipment, um, laser measuring devices and things of those nature to aid them in that job. Uh, we have a uh, bicycle patrol that uh, you see out in the summer when the weather is nice. Um, we added that to the department uh, a number of years ago uh, in hopes of uh, getting our officers uh, a little more directly in touch with the community. It gives our officers an opportunity to actually be outside of the uh, steel enclosure of a squad car and uh, ride around on a bicycle in the village and make contact with uh, citizens and children and, and adults. Um, we have a boat, uh, a boat patrol. Um, we have two boats, a larger boat that we acquired from the Coast Guard a number of years ago that's primarily used on Lake Michigan and in the harbor, as well as a smaller boat that we use on the inland lakes during the summer as time permits. Um, we have a, a motorcycle and a, a motorcycle patrol, a couple of guys that have been um, trained in uh, motorcycle operation that we get out to, to, to um, kind of be used for a couple of things uh, very similar to the bicycle. It, mm -hmm. It's a little more accessible for citizens to make contact with the officer when they're on a the motorcycle and it's used for special details and, and parades and things of that nature. Uh, we have um, snowmobile and ATVs that we use as time permits and weather permits. Uh, snowmobile I don't think got out at all this winter but um, it's there and it can be used for um, not only in patrol and enforcement efforts, but if we'd have somebody lost, uh, like out on the marsh or in, in the kettles with the ATV. <clears throat> um, we have a SWAT team, which is a, a special weapons and assault team uh, that's used for high risk um, situations where uh, firearms may be involved. We also have um, a couple of uh, shared teams that we, um, we share with, uh, with other law enforcement agencies in, in the county and one of those is our, our drug enforcement uh, unit. Uh, they, uh, that, like I said, that's a, a shared team um, comprised of primarily officers from the Sheboygan Police Department and the Sheriff's Department but um, the other law enforcement agencies do have investigators that work from time to time with that unit. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a combined um, dive team with the city. So those are there's some of the some of the specialized things that we do. You've been sheriff now for about two months. Are there any specific goals you'd like to accomplish in, during your term in office? Yes. Um, obviously, one of my high priorities is to. Uh, uh, maintain a professional level of service to the citizens that we that I'm responsible to. Um, obviously I'd like to continue and uh, maybe explore other ways to network and uh, teamwork and cooperate and coordinate between not only other law enforcement agencies in the county but um, with uh, city and county uh, political officials. Uh, the goal being that uh, I would like to provide, um, you know, the quality of service and effective and efficient service that the citizens of Sheboygan County have come to expect and enjoy. Any particular new initiatives you'd like to uh, bring on board? Well, um, yes, uh, some of them I've already started. Um, one of them was uh, to aggressively pursue outstanding arrest warrants. It's um, it, 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 it's something that was out there and um, after we opened the detention center um, we, we've, we finally had some uh, capability mm -hmm. to to actively pursue some of the outstanding arrest warrants um, and it's, it's, it's surprising how quickly after you place the handcuffs on somebody <laughs> that they find a way to come up with the money that they need in order to purge that warrant so that's been kind of, that, that's been one of my initiatives and I've directed our patrol division to take a an aggressive position on that and um, they have thus far. We're, we're doing very well in that aspect. Um, we lost our school liaison officer that served uh, on a part-time basis between Random Lake High School and Oostburg High School last year because of some budgetary cons mm -hmm. uh, constraints within the school. Um, I would like to maybe somehow um, get together with the schools again to see mm -hmm. if there's some way we can uh, work towards getting that officer back into school. Um, sometimes it's it's, it's difficult for the public to see the benefits of, of an officer like that in terms of dollars, but um, we have seen, and I think the school has seen some real positive um, 
things come from having that liaison mm -hmm. officer available in the school. Um, I'd like to um, explore the reinstatement of uh, special deputies. Um, it's, it's a program that we have had in the past, and I think that um, with all of the things that are on the plate for Sheboygan County in the future as far as uh, potential for tourism and uh, things like that, events, uh, we may need to supplement our current staffing with a, a less expensive uh, type of staffing. Uh, the County Humane Officer has, uh, is an area that I think that maybe we could share uh, all law enforcement uh, agencies and uh, some of the village and town towns that have constables. I know that we're, we're always um, confronted with uh, questions about humane issues mm -hmm. as it relates to dogs and cows and horses and things like that, especially in the winter with the weather. Uh, I would like to explore that and, and see what uh, resources there are in the community to help us um, get a more active humane officer in the county. Uh, the canine unit was, a, was another um, uh, special detail that we had had at one time and um, I see some advantages in some ways that we could maybe share that resource with other county law enforcement uh, agencies as well. And um, then uh, one of the other things that I've done, in fact before I left uh, the office today to come here, I had uh, got a communication from our jail administrator. I had put out, uh, I had given him the authorization to kind of put feelers out for other counties that might be experiencing jail overcrowding to see if we could um, uh, take on some of those inmates um, as a source of revenue and um, there are some possibilities there so those are some of the things that I'm already started on but uh, other things that I would like to work towards in the next uh, several months. Mm -hmm. That's a very impressive list I wish you success on, <laughs> Thank you. on all those areas. Um, we've heard a lot about the state budget deficit and how it may affect counties. Do you have any idea how that might affect your department? Well, um, from a local and county perspective, I see the, uh, you know, the potential loss of shared revenue um, uh, having an impact on not only the Sheriff's Department but all um, entities of government. And I guess my uh, concern there or my interest there would be what uh, impact that that might have on staffing and our ability to provide um, efficient and effective uh, services to the community that we serve. Um, from a, a state or federal perspective, um, we, we utilize grant money in um, delivering a lot of our services, especially some of our special details, and I would have some concern as to um, what if any effect on the cutting of those grants might have on public safety issues in the county. Um, for an example, uh, our speed wave and our click it, uh, speed wave is uh, enforcement uh, for speeding violations. Mm -hmm. um, click it is a seat belt uh, detail that's uh, enforced through grant money. Um, we have Mobilize, which is a, is, a, is a public service announcement program where we try to get the word out to, for citizens to uh, report impaired driving. Uh, and, and, and those are largely um, funded through um, grants, and I would, I would hope that we can continue to deliver those types of services and that that grant money would still be there. Um, in addition to that, um, the jail, as I had said, is a, is a major draw on our resources and our, um, our budget, and um, there's always money coming from the, from the state to supplement um, um, inmates that might not have funds um, as far as um, their, their, their boarding, um, their uh, medical and um, drug expenses and so on and so forth. So I'd be, I, I'd be um, you know, real concerned if we start losing that because we would probably then have to pick up some of that mm -hmm. that we were normally getting through uh, state grants. Have you been thinking about any ways that we could reduce costs within the Sheriff's Department? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that, um, what I'd like to do within the department, and I've already um, directed uh, my administrative staff to do, is to um, come up with some ideas as to um, how we can save money. Uh, and I, I've also passed that on to our officers because they're probably in the best position to determine, uh, you know, from an operational aspect, what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that might be able to save us some money. 
with that, um, I would like to do a complete inventory of within the sheriff's department of not only the the cost for the services that we provide, but the cost of um, our equipment and our supplies, and see if there are ways there that we could share with uh, maybe uh, maybe not so much with uh, other law enforcement agencies, but uh, within city and county government, um, if we can if uh, if if we can save um, admin uh, administrative staff um, uh, purchasing um, items and, and things like that on a, on a, on a cooperative um, quantity type basis, I think we need to explore that from a law enforcement uh, perspective where you know we're, we're buying um, some high priced specialized equipment um, firearms and uh, ballistic vests and squad cars if we could get together with the other law enforcement agencies in the county or maybe even in this part of the state to um, to buy on a purchase when we're going to purchase, purchase purchase on a quantity basis and hopefully save some money. So, uh, so those are some of the things that I'd like to do. Okay. One of the things that I'm very concerned about is sharing services with other communities. Are there any areas that you feel we could share more with the city or other oh, police departments? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, the joint dispatch issue has come up several times in the past, and um, I, I would, uh, you know, be open to, to explore the, mm -hmm. that possibility. Clearly, um, there's an area that there's an opportunity possibly for shared um, dispatch. Um, other areas that um, I think we could share was one of them I had talked about, our accident reconstruction team is a highly specialized team that um, because of the nature of their job they have very expensive equipment I think we could share that you know not only throughout the county but maybe even regionally and assist in, in those areas um, training law enforcement training I had opened up our training we do in-service training every spring within our, our department this year I had ma made an invitation to the other county police chiefs to participate in our training and uh, let them know what we were training in, and some of them have taken advantage of that. Um, uh, and like I had said, I think the uh, the purchasing of uh, specialized equipment that um, you know specific to law enforcement would be another area that maybe we can work on instead of the chief of police in Plymouth looking to buy some piece of law enforcement equipment. Maybe we are at the same time we don't know, and we go off and. And, and buy it separately, and maybe we could have saved some money by, by purchasing those things jointly. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are a lot of opportunities to do things, and I, I, I think that um, the climate is right to, to explore uh, sharing of services in hopes of reducing the duplication mm -hmm. of services. You've really set a lot of good goals for yourself, Sheriff. What do you think your biggest challenges might be during, during your term of office? Well, clearly, I think uh, dealing with the the budget and uh, the implications of you know what uh, the loss of shared revenue will mean to our, our department. Um, I guess my uh, my concern would be, or my challenge I see is um, maintaining the level of staffing that the county has permitted me to have within the sheriff's department to, to be able to maintain that staffing because I see a lot of a lot of things that are going to be you know. Um, on, our, on, on the sheriff's department's plate in the years to come, we have uh, we have concerns for uh, uh, domestic security, mm -hmm. domestic terrorism. We have uh, a lot of events that are planned for Sheboygan County that are going to require law enforcement presence. So I'm hoping, and I and I'm I'm thinking that that's probably my greatest challenge is to just try to maintain the staffing level that I have, not lose in that respect, mm -hmm. and and continue to provide some of the special things that we have talked about to the community in a, in a cost-effective, efficient manner. Great. Sheriff, it was good to hear you mention earlier that you're asking your staff what their ideas are for operational savings or how we can become more efficient or provide service more effectively. And I know the chairman and I and county board supervisors, all of us in county government, we take a tremendous amount of pride in the work we do and the services that we provide. With uh, some 1,300 employees, you're always going to have a handful that perhaps aren't uh, 
working as hard or as effectively as they should. There's going to be human error. But generally speaking, I'm so proud of the staff that we have working for Sheboygan County. And I know you feel the same way about the staff and the Sheriff's Department. You've got some new faces. You've got a new inspector. You have a new emergency management director. All in all, uh, how are you feeling about the team that you've got around you? I, I'm feeling real good, and that's, a, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, this is the first time in 25 years that I've been at the Sheriff's Department that we, that we have a new a sheriff, a new inspector, and then you have the whole domino effect as a result of those promotions, uh, a new director, uh, which oversees one of our divisions, uh, new captains, and, and, and all the way down. And in addition to that, we do have a, a new emergency uh, government director. Uh, I feel very comfortable with the people that are, have assumed those positions. Uh, and you're absolutely correct. We have a, a great, uh, uh, dedicated, and loyal staff at the Sheriff's Department um, overall. And, um, and I, I think we'll, we can make some good things happen. You mentioned, you know, with the new emergency uh, management director, emergency government director, and all the heightened alert throughout the nation on terrorism and, and being prepared. And, uh, what has the Sheriff's Department done to uh, prepare the community if, there, if anything would happen here? Well, I think the, the media, the news media has been pretty good about getting the word out um, as to what citizens can do to protect themselves. Uh, what I have directed our officers to do is just to be a little more conscious of some of our um, utility facilities, our transportation system, um, our highways, uh, look for suspicious, you know, there, we're always looking for things out of the ordinary and suspicious activity, but to just be a a little more aware of uh, things like at the airport, uh, you know, another facility that needs to be watched maybe a little closer. Uh, what, that's what I'm telling our, our people at the department. I think people, the citizens, um, also need to be more aware of what is suspicious. They're the best to tell, uh, you know, to be able to tell what is out of the ordinary in their particular community or neighborhood. So uh, we're encouraging them to report any type of suspicious activity. But as the president has said, and um, uh, Governor Ridge, uh, I, I don't think we need to change our, our lifestyle. We just need to be more aware of our physical surroundings and take safety precautions if you're traveling and, and things like that. So a lot of information today that you shared, and, and certainly this last subject, very important to people. If they have um, a desire to get more information from your department or have questions, concerns, suggestions, uh, what's the best way for them to proceed? Um, they should call the Sheriff's Department at uh, 459-3112 and ask for our Emergency Government Director, Melissa Johnson. Um, she is updated on a, almost on a daily basis of what is going on, what we need to be uh, aware of, and, and what the public can do to, uh, to help us and to keep themselves safe. Very good. Well, thank you for being our guest today. And I had the opportunity to meet with Melissa earlier this week, and I think we've got a real good person in place there. So I encourage people to call her if they do have questions or suggestions. On behalf of the County Board Chairman, Bill Gehring, and myself, Adam Payne, we're very pleased that you joined us today. And thanks, Sheriff Helmke, for being here as well. Uh, next month, it's our intent to have Michael Collard, our new personnel director, as our guest to talk about the many challenges that we have in that office. Uh, we're presently negotiating with a number of bargaining groups, and there certainly are questions about increasing costs for health insurance and areas such as that. So again, thank you for joining us.